Good evening and welcome to Tronos at the Fringe 2022. Uh, this is a very special event for me and my name is Mats Granberg and I will have doing a conversation here with the Indian poet uh, Pankuri Sinha and we have just met just a couple of minutes ago and but this is not the whole truth because when the last Toronto's at Friends were in October 2021, at the last day of the festival, Pankuri contacted me and asked if, if we should do this in 2022. So it has been a very long way and I'm very thankful for having you in the audience here uh, in this, for this event. We'll have, I'm gonna put some questions and answers. And if you want to ha have a question yourself, uh, there's a possibility at the end of the conversation. Okay, let's go then. Uh, Pankuri Sinha is a bilingual poet and story writer from India who writes both in Hindi and in English and we will hear her read in this, these two languages. Uh, she has had two books of poems uh, published in English and uh, five or poems, poetry collections in Hindi and all, also two collections of stories published in Hindi. Uh, and many more uh, books are lined up. And now she's here. She's, you're one of the most long distance guests at this year's festival. Um, but you haven't traveled straight from India. You've been in Europe for a while. Absolutely, yes. And it, you had uh, some travel, travel coming here today. So can you tell <laughs> me a little bit about it? Absolutely. Well, first of all, thank you so much, Mads. It's great to meet you in person. We interacted online and I would like to thank you for, um, you know, that lively conversation talking about the poetries that were read at that point in time. And I'm looking forward to the poetry session as well. But I think it's great to talk about the making of poetry, the writing process and all of it. And I think my residencies in Europe were about that. So, um, you know, I am looking forward to talking about it at length. And mm -hmm. yes, it was an eventful arrival in Toronto. I was supposed to be here yesterday, actually, some more than 24 hours late. And I don't know uh, whose mistake is it, but I was supposed to, um, I mean, I was flying from, technically speaking, from Bulgaria, uh, then on to Greece, and then from connecting flight from Orly, and I messed it, as in it's it's like an everyday thing, but I have to tell you, don't, I mean, don't, you know, it's 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 not a very nice uh, situation. <laughs> it's It's absolutely more than three and a half hours longer wait just for security check and there were lots of people crying about it. So anyway, so without, you know, uh, <laughs> so uh, I am in this beautiful place uh, late, mm. but so glad to be here and thank you. Thank you to Dominique, thank you to Colum, and thank you to all the people here, all the eminent guests and poets themselves, Magnus, who is an amazing friend as well. I look forward to interacting later at length. But you had a happier time when you were. Even I used to call it Pex, but mm. it is Pech. Uh, Pech. Mm. And uh, the supervisor, he spent a lot of time, you know, explaining to me how the, the mm. even you have in Swedish yeah. those dots, and even we have it mm. in our Hindi script, uh, lots of dots and signs. And so he said that where uh, it is a dot or something, it is a longer vowel, so it's Pech. So amazing place. I arrived where uh, it is a dot or something it is a longer vowel so it's page so amazing place i arrived in budapest from india and uh, i was my idea of hungry was you know absolutely from the books or what i had read or whatever a little bit i had seen on television it was my first time in eastern europe and my second time in europe earlier i had been to the uk and france a little bit to paris mm -hmm. and uh, 
it's it's sort of an eye opener in so many ways because I had also known of Hungary um, through the Indologists. There are lots of Hungarian Indologists who have studied Indian culture and not in recent times, but centuries uh, behind, you know, centuries ago. Mm. And there were people like Choma who were very famous and very respected mm. in India because they spent a lot of time studying not just simple language and literature, but they compiled big dictionaries and uh, they studied Buddhist ideology, comparing it with the Hindu ideology mm. and the Western ideology, I mean, philosophies and uh, perspectives towards religion and so on and so forth. So I basically... Um, wanted to see how this whole culture was like. And I had also read um, books by Hungarian authors um, about, say, Gandhi, a very famous one. This was written around the time of the Second World War by Laszlo Nemeth, who was a dentist and, uh, and an uh, author, a writer, dramatist, a playwright, and quite well known. So his book is called um, Gandhi's Death, Gandhi ki Mrityu, and it has been translated in Hindi by um, a professor of Hungarian language in Delhi University, the capital of India, and her name is Professor Margit uh, Kovash, right? So mm. um, she was a, she has been a guide in in this whole process to an extent. She lives in New Delhi, and uh, uh, she's been part of this um, uh, in a big way. But uh, coming to the present times, it's it's unless you get there and you see uh, some of the things, like I would like to borrow a few words from one of my favorite writers in Hindi, Nirmal Verma. He was nominated for the Nobel at one point in time. He's Lal Teen Kichat, the red roofs you know, of Europe. And it's just so beautiful. It's overwhelming. And you want to get closer to the lifestyle, the people, the language. You want to pick up a few sounds and uh, food and culture and little architectural designs around, say the say the way the Pasha Mosque was designed and redesigned over the, the centuries during different rules. But yeah, so it was a very rich exposure. And um, if you get down to different places, how uh, communism mm. affected them. So mm. if you go to the basement of Page Cathedral. Mm you will find um, documents uh, of, uh, you know, suppression, how the church was oppressed and so on and so forth. So um, I think it's a very sort of um, enriching yeah. experience. Yeah. Yeah. And from there you went to uh, Sofia in Bulgaria. Bulgaria. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. And how was this it experience? It was uh, equally nice and there the, the communist story is different and people really talk about the, today's times like just walking down the uh, city center people would say oh this monument is from the revival period and this monument is from the socialist period and we are actually trying to get rid of this you know uh, we actually campaigned and got rid of this big uh, soldier holding a gun in the middle of the street and why should we need it we are done with the revolutions we are in a democracy now we want to elect people uh, but you know that the government fell in mm. Bulgaria, just, just, and coincidentally, it was just after uh, one of the events that we had. And I would like to say that uh, the director of the institute um, who runs Sophia Literature and Translation House, uh, after the government fell, as in the coalition mm. pulled out, there was an interim government for a little bit. Mm. And she was the deputy minister of culture for a little bit, but now probably they are going to have an election. I don't know what happened after no. that. Yeah, so it was it was very different. Again, they have a longer history of the Turkish rule, and uh, the mosques um, are, you know, more present. Mm. Some are as mosques, and there are more, um, you know, mosques, and some are like archaeological museums and so on and so forth. And you can see history very beautifully uh, preserved. And I would also like to say that both of these places, Bulgaria may be more than Hungary, has Roman ruins. So Serdika is a big metro station. I wrote one of my poems on Serdika Metro mm. and sent it to an award competition in Italy. So I hope you'll wish me luck for that. Yeah, but I do. Uh, thank you. <laughs> but uh, it's very overwhelming, you know. Uh, it's like finding things in layers and you can actually very clearly see it. Uh, similarly, in, in, in a town called Plovdiv, I mean, 
probably you guys have traveled to all of these places and you are aware for but for me it was something totally new and um, to see the roman ruins from that time it's just an overwhelming experience and you see the layers uh, how you know there was a theater and it looks like maybe it was just at the max 20 years old it's like marble you can see the carving clearly and on top of it is the town and you can clearly see that if you just destroyed the town and kept digging maybe you will find more remnants but you can't yeah. do that right yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you uh, and about this with governments there are more more governments struggling in europe and i don't think if anybody knows if, if great britain has a government right now uh, all he resigned <laughs> yeah and uh, but i i know you have traveled a lot and you've also been in canada and you have studied there and it was there your first english poetry collection prison talkies was published in 2013 and this is about uh, uh, experience that you had in when you were in uh, states in in the states yeah mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah so basically um like i say you know or uh, this is a very famous phrase borrowed mm. from a professor of mm. mine who used to lecture mm. in journalism classes for us and he used to also teach film criticism and he said it's something called billing suspension of disbelief so amazing things can happen mm. on a small scale on a big scale but this so happened that i mean it was born out of a, sort of a near theft of my nearly achieved green card mm. i was living there uh, since six years mm. and i had also with my say ex-husband built up a house mm. and everything and maybe we were great friends and we decided to be friends mm. and you know maybe part ways and whatever or uh, i don't know how but but uh, lots of things were going on and uh, you know i wrote an email to a german professor asking him about a, a few chance mm. meetings and stuff like that and uh, it made him so mad that he went to the extent of complaining and complaining and complaining and actually after i had dropped my mm. uh, status with my ex-husband he decided to get my PhD program canceled. And I was already a registered master's student with, you know, I was revising my master's yeah. thesis and I ended up being an illegal alien, mm. you know? So I came back home and I found that, oh, I am suddenly without status and it is, you know, up for review. And I drove, you know, to, uh, and that's the last time I have mm. driven. <laughs> I drove to my university, sat in a cafe where I used to sit and work every day. And in a little bit comes the first the campus police and then they call the border police. Mm. It was dramatic. I mean, I'm saying this with a lot of uh, smiles right now, but mm. I was really, uh, you know, you can imagine it was really a very shocking experience. But the, the poems were born um, after a little while, actually, then I went to Canada because, you know, you after living in the uh, States for six years, you just can't come back to your own country. I mean, how much ever of a heartbreak you've had uh, because you you feel even more out of place in some ways yeah. because it is forced. And at least you want to be in that um, geographical environment yeah. and that academic environment to which you're used to, you know? So, I mean, not just that, I was seriously pursuing yeah. my PhD. I was doing a research in British imperialism yeah. on the profits yeah. of the British empire using some products, yeah. cotton, tea, yeah. et cetera. And I wanted to do that and I went there and um, and, and this is not, uh, you know, dramatic. <laughs> my passport was expiring and just one coincidence and they took it forever to renew yeah. and so, uh, I didn't finish it, I will someday, mm. but for now I put it on hold because uh, I wanted to sort of focus more on my writing and in 2013 that's that's when, you know, I came out of the university, I yeah. kind of left it and finished and I published it and it's, uh, it's actually 2013 is about more than, about almost seven mm. years after the event and it is, you have read the book and yeah. it is... Um, mostly about the detention center. Mm. And I hate to say this, but I think that to an extent it's true that once you've written about it, mm. it doesn't remain as much a part of you as it is before. And this is not just saying like poetry is therapy. This is not even saying that you were just getting it out of your system or you even write of beauty and you, you know, mm. or anything. 
uh, and and I, and I met amazing people, and the book is also about them because you know a detention center can be an amazing place. There were yeah. people who committed really big um, crimes because they said that themselves. I mean, like uh, and regular drug offenders mm. and mm. so on and so forth. So it was amazing to mm. an extent. Mm. It was, you know, not my world, so yeah. to say. But to an extent, I also give it a conspiracy angle. Mm. But yeah, so. So that's the story about prison talkies. And uh, I suppose you want to re her, hear Pankuri read a little bit. And she has some poems just out of the book that we talked about, prison talkies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. So, Do you want me to read? Yeah. Oh, wow. OK, so I will read the first poem mm -hmm. from uh, this collection. So it's called Of Prison Darkness. And it wasn't actually ever dark. There always was light and there was no window, so there was no sunlight. Of a light bulb, of a night bulb, lit up forever, never going off, with no switch in the room, but probably a mild dimming of the lights at night. And you would ask the guards to lower the AC. You could see them from the vent in the door, from the big square vent. She often did woke up, wore her spectacles and saw them. They wore blue uniforms, navy blue. They asked you to not carry your food in your cells. She did. They all did, many times. Once they called again and again for stolen milk. For anyone who had stolen milk, but she hid them behind the TV, was locked for an evening with no evening shower. She the most disciplined of all prisoners, ate very quietly, asked for extra, whenever anyone got a bail and left. While they all talked with food, over food, some talked in their sleep, some cried at night. They came in the mornings, before dawn, before the sunrise, way before sunrise and took them people who were going back to their country, their own country, or countries, different people going to different countries, being sent, rather. Some said there were many countries within their country, and they had none. But they had lost the case and were being sent back. Also people who had overstayed, knowing the penalty. Some people were caught at the border, crossing the border with expired papers. It all makes you wonder if there was a larger nexus, a bigger game. But no one told you anything. No one told you anything. Those contesting their status spoke endlessly of the court without speaking of the truth or even of what was happening. There was mystery. There were secrets. There were committed friends. There were promises. There was eternal night. The light never went off. The doors opened and locked at a time. They were computerized and could be opened and locked at any time. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, yes, I have read this uh, poetry collection, and it's. I think it's a. Uh, it's. Uh, a large collection, it's about 200 and more than 250 pages. Uh, and, and it's uh, very interesting the, the way you delve into this uh, prison or uh, detainment centers uh, world. Yeah. And I, I understand the shock from being a, at a university in a safe world and probably and, and suddenly be in a, a detention center. So, but and you released the, the year after uh, another poetry collection in mm -hmm. English, which is called Dear Susanna. But uh, this poetry that we heard now, uh, you are also a kind of activist uh -huh. uh, yes. uh, among your being a poet. Right. And uh, right. can you tell me a little about this activism? Yes. Um, you know, I am not so much of an activist as in regularly act, um, involved mm. with an NGO or anything like that. But my activism is more um, 
visible in my writing mm. itself. And I would like to share that I used to be a journalist. I still am. I mm. do a little bit of freelancing, mm. but I'm focusing more these days on my writing and translation. And uh, the activism, you know, to an extent, I could say that, yes, I, I uh, when I went back and, you know, I, the way I relate to the environment, I have a few dogs adopted. I want to make a shelter home for mm. a few dogs, you know, stray dogs. Mm. There is none in India. You could see them. And by the way, there are a few uh, in, in some parts in Greece, in Bulgaria, mm. and, and, uh, but they are well tracked mm. and well maintained. Uh, to an extent, but um, that's 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 on the sides. Yeah. But um, you know, um, as a journalist, what I encountered was, to an extent, not so much uh, the repress repression of free press or censorship, but more the TRP game, where you know you have to be so interesting, um, and you end up being so sensational in a way because somebody is just sitting there after a very exhausting day maybe 2 hours of commute and don't you know doesn't want to listen to extremely you know uh, uh, or watch extremely sort of analytical or thoughtful television and maybe is more just interested in uh, you know the real events like you know sensational things film affairs buildings collapsing uh, street accidents and so on and so forth um, so uh, one of my stories, I mean, it's not yeah. just uh, in poetry, but it's also in stories. One of the first stories that I wrote, and it was uh, really liked, and it got published by a very prestigious uh, publisher in Hindi. It's called uh, The Truth of the Story, if I actually translate it. Uh, it's called Kahani Ka Sach in Hindi, The Truth of the Story. So it's like a reporter just going out and coming back with a story about you know a very famous uh, Urdu poet's house mm -hmm. uh, on the brink of collapse, and the, the executive producer producer of the television channel mm. just um, telling this reporter that so what if the house did collapse and two people die in it that's real news mm. if it is on the brink of collapse it is not so that kind of dark mm. satire you know um, uh, and mixing with such kind of um, sort of reporting mm. which a real reporter sometimes get deprived of is also part of it mm. and yes uh, of course depicting all the untold stories again mm. you know in so many ways things uh, that do not make it to the report because they can't be proved or you know despite all the allegedly and everything there's so much that gets left out of a page in a newspaper or of mm. a bulletin so um, I think that uh, speaking for the marginalized, yeah. I think. And and um, also, I think that, um, you know, uh, not being afraid of getting your hands dirty mm. as well. Um, I think it is a big part of that. Mm. And uh, maybe siding with those who are fighting the powerful. So, yeah. And uh, I know your poetry and uh, storytelling is, uh, is covering a lot of issues. Uh, but uh, which which is your most important issue? Is there mm -hmm, one? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I think so, feminist issues, yeah. more rights for women, more liberty, more independence, a little more individualism uh, for them. And um, I would like to share this. I mean, uh, it's a it's a wonderful world of Hindi writing, mm -hmm. and I think that you all are aware that um, Hindi has just now made history, uh, winning the Booker, mm -hmm. uh, Booker prize, prize for the first time. A book that was written in Hindi by a famous uh, novelist, and was translated by the American writer Daisy Rockwell. American translator, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. uh, has won the Booker. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a big world, yeah. but uh, there is always, as in the writing world of all languages, I'm sure, there's always you know, a push and pull, and there are uh, several contentious issues always there, and then there's a lot of um, sort of behind the stage thing going, maybe uh, the, the things that are very safe to say, the things that are politically correct, the things that won't displease uh, people, you know, in the top echelons um, are, are, you know, sort of not always just very liked, very much liked by the people, yeah. but at the same time, uh, being picked up by the, by the bigger press, yeah. you know, 
uh, bigger publishers, mm. at least some of them. Yeah. I have been lucky to uh, to find always a nice publisher for some of my most rebellious stuff as well, and mm. other poets similarly, because mm. I think that poetry has a history of being more rebellious in mm. Hindi. We call it Pratirod ki Kavita. So it's a parallel stream almost, mm. uh, where we you know, um, talk about everything, be it the environment. And, and, and yes, that is an issue as well in my writings. It's a lot there. The cutting down of the trees, what is it doing? I mean, like in April, our temperature was like 42. And it was in news everywhere. So. Yeah. There are climate activists as, as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, and uh, I'm going to go back now to this eventful summer uh, because uh, at the same day, uh, Pankuri's birthday, her new collection of poetry uh, in Hindi was published. Yes. So you're thank coming you. here with a fresh poetry collection. And, and can you tell me a little bit about this? Yes. And I think, uh -huh. I, and I'm not Hindi speaking, but I think it's called Nilakshar. Oh, and uh. absolutely correct pronunciation. Ah, thank yes. you. And Nilakshar. So it's a it's a it's a sandhi, yeah, in a way, as in like two words uh, joined together, and Nila and Akshar. So uh, it means, uh, if I literally translate mm. it, it would mean two letters. But you can't translate it yeah. like that. What it says is that you know, um, letters that are you know sort of um, or or words mm. made out of say you know blue music mm. or something like that mm. you know or dipped in blue ink mm. or something. Mm. So it's 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 referring to the dark tone, yeah. the dark mm. mood of the poems there, and it's a lot about Corona because it was very very bad. COVID uh, affected us uh, very badly. Some of our mm. poets died. A poet who wrote me a recommendation letter and was really big and wasn't mm. even that old, who he passed away yeah. suddenly. Like, no rhyme or reason, just COVID, you know. And similarly, there were some strange deaths. There was, uh, and, and, and on the streets, it was very bad because lots of people lo uh, lost their jobs, lost mm. lots of people. Because in India, you know, it's, uh, it's very different. Uh, you have just uh, like street food out there, you know, vendors mm. and um, uh, people just looking for little jobs and selling and maybe just walking through the whole town mm. and, you know, calling out to people to buy this, mm. handicrafts, this and that. So it was the lockdown meant total starvation. So lots of poems about that. Lots of people had to just break the lockdown and the government couldn't do anything. It was lot, lots in the news because there was a long march from the national capital. Once there was a lockdown, the first one announced the laborers, they just marched mm -hmm. on foot to all the cities and villages nearby mm -hmm. and not so nearby. So they walked for like 10 days or something. So, you know, it was a but they did it, and mm. and and these are sturdy people because they are laborers, you know. Yeah. So it's uh, uh, you know the different stories from the rural parts and from the migrant laborers. Mm. So lots of poems are about that. Um, lots of poems, like I said, are about this um, these feminist issues, mm. and um, uh, what is the picture of an ideal Indian woman uh, if if it is. Um, uh, if it uh, if it is uh, you know extremely oriented towards the west then she's considered extremely westernized yeah. um at the same time there are some very westernized women who are you know really uh, accepted and they have, they are you know uh, totally fine and it is all a part of life you know uh, and not just in writing i mean in real life as well i mean and kids are exposed more and more to hollywood and not just hollywood but the whole music world the whole I mean, we are talking about mm. saving Hindi literature mm. as opposed to English because yeah. that's a, you know, a major influence um, and kids would be reading mostly English books. So we want to give uh, the real posh uh, public schools studying kids mm. uh, Hindi literature mm. as well. So it's also always trying to sort of compete with that world. Mm. So um, also talking about some of the concerns of the middle class. Mm. families, you know, uh, heartbreaks, love poems, mm. that sort of stuff. So, so thank you. Uh, if there, are there anyone in the audience who speaks Hindi? No one. 
Okay. Nevertheless, we will hear uh, Pankuri read a poem from her new poetry collection in Hindi. Uh, so, okay. and I'm, you can yeah. introduce the poems. Yes, yes. But I have to tell you, mm. I'm going to take one minute and I'm going to just say that I, uh, I'm sure that there are some Indian people in town yeah. as well. I look for them later. But today, as I just, just as I arrived in Stockholm, mm. uh, Central Station, a girl just came up running to me, excuse me, you know, we are doing this for UNICEF and how mm. can you be a part of it? And I, the first thing I said, look, I have a train to catch mm. and I'm going to miss mm. it. But are you from India? And she says, no, I'm from Pakistan. Mm. So I said, okay, <laughs> great to meet you. I have to just run. But, you know, we are from the same yeah. part. This was created yeah. at the time of the partition. Anyway, so this poem is about um, remembering uh, my father on my birthday. Mm. Uh, and it's a little bit of a rhyming poem. I mm. don't generally write rhyming mm. poems, but still. So I think you will feel it uh, a little bit. Uh, and it can be about anybody. I mean, it's not just me. We all remember uh, as we put together yeah. a celebration, our dear parents. My mother is still there, and I'm going to be very happy telling her about this. So it's called Jan Din Par Pita. Gahe bagahe yaad aate hai pita. Raste pere aam ke aane par, lichi ke tootne par. Amrood wale ki haak par, bharwa karele ki bhaag par. बिकने आने पे सब्जी और मखान कभी घर ले आने पे पान जब करने को जिद मचलता हो मन लड़कपन के अभिनय में सबसे शांत दिखता हो जीवन पिता की आती है याद हर पल हर क्षण पिता की आती है याद हर पल हर क्षण लेकिन जन्म दिन पर पिता जैसे कहते हुए एक बार फिर जाओ कर लो पार्टी और खत्म करो जल्दी इधर भी भेजना केक और मत भेजना ठंडा मिल्क केक यू कैन सी सम इंग्लिश वर्ड्स क्या क्या बना है खाने में और क्या नया मुझे सुनाने में सो द लास्ट टू लाइंस आर व्हाट आर द न्यू थिंग्स कुक्ड फॉर द डिनर एंड व्हाट व्हाट डू यू हैव रिटन न्यू टू रीड टू मी थैंक यू I think it's wonderful to hear poetry in Hindi, uh, even if I don't understand the word. <laughs> um, so, uh, and we are going to close this conversation uh, soon, but uh, are there any questions for Pankuri? Don't ask. Well, obviously, since you write both in English and in Hindi, uh, do you translate yourself between those languages or are they different poems with the different languages? Mostly they are different poems with different languages. Um, but sometimes I attempt translating them as well. And I think that uh, it's, it's more difficult to do justice to that. Um, at least translating my own poetry uh, from Hindi to English. Uh, I have um, till now maybe not tried the English ones into Hindi, but uh, this one I have tried. And yes, I mean, they're there and it's okay, but uh, probably somebody told me you're not very happy with it because uh, you don't feel the distance. I mean, you probably need a distance in translation or something. But what I enjoy more is writing in the two languages and I absolutely enjoy translating other poets. Uh, from English into Hindi. And, uh, you know, I have translated a few poets here, Dominic and Magnus, and it has been a, a very enjoyable experience. And I, it, my, my uh, residency in mm. Bulgaria, mm. I should have said that, yeah. instead I was so consumed in the in environment yeah. about which I'm looking forward mm. to writing, uh, it was a translation residency, and I'm supposed to translate, and I said this on my mm. own, that I will do all, an entire our book mm. of Bulgarian poetry, um, along with Tom Phillips, a British poet who lives there and who translates from original Bulgarian into English. And uh, he was, you know, uh, huge in this mm. translation yeah. project because I'm translating many of his translations mm. into Hindi yeah. and, of course, other poets um, as well. So, um, yeah, I enjoy um, translating them. And I think that as a poet, it's a, it's a, it's a nice um, exercise not exposure or experience, but 
an exercise, it just brings you, uh, you know, closer to the emotions of another poet and emotions and uh, tensions of another culture. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 What um, about your own poems? Do you find yourself changing style and themes? Uh, are you one poet in English and another poet in Hindi? Oh, that's 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 put very beautifully. Thank you. Yes, um, I don't, um, you know, um, uh, try to do that consciously, but sometimes I think that yes, that's a, a nice thing, you know, um, not to become like typically, uh, um, you know, identifiable. That you know, if you just read the poem, you know who the poet is. At the same time, it's not such a bad thing either. You know, so yeah, but I try to experiment a lot with forms. Sometimes it is rhyming, sometimes generally they are not, it's pre verse. Um, at the same time, you know, uh, you know, it, it has to be poetry, and uh, you know, ultimately it's the critics, your readers, your, your fellow poets and writers who will tell you that you know uh, how they liked it, and thankfully, and publishers and, and people who are sitting in. Places yeah. who who have given me some awards, I'm very thankful to them. Mm -hmm. So sometimes they also tell you when you are really fighting hard, you mm -hmm. know, uh, how good is it? So, so yes, I I love uh, doing that, being very very um, experimental in both themes and uh, the ways in which I I write. And sometimes I write the same theme in many ways. Sometimes I write a, a poem on one theme at the same time a story. Uh, and there might be a little little chunk of an event in a poetry uh, just to, you know, uh, give it maybe just a little bit of a texture or body, but the entire weaving is different. So, yeah. Are there more questions? No? I think there is. No. Alicia. I wanted to ask uh, the, the way you write, because I mm. have the feeling that you are very productive and you write a lot. Is it something that you have a discipline, or you just uh, write when when the point comes? And how is this? Wow! I don't know if somebody asked before, <laughs> but how, how is this procedure? Yes, I think you write a lot yourself. You're a very disciplined person. That is why you are looking at it like this. But I am, in some ways, also a bohemian. You know what I mean? Like there are days when I'm just writing. Um, and especially because of this uh, rather uh, painful, if I may say, uh, immigrant experience, you know, and Dear Susanna is yeah. also a lot about that. It's about immigration and it's about uh, race and gender and how a war that suddenly falls on your head affects your whole life, you know. So it's about a lot of things. And yes, um, so I think that, uh, you know, um, again, I'm remembering a Bulgarian mm. writer. I just mm. interviewed the, the president of Bulgaria Pen Association, mm. Zadravka Eftimova, mm. and she said, look, you're just doomed to write, you know? Mm. So that is what I mean. I mean, you're just compelled to do it. But it's so nice also sometimes when you're not feeling that, Compulsion, and you can take a little time off, you know, and and just think about it from a distance. So I also like to do that. Um, but yeah, uh, I enjoy writing, and uh, you know, you have to go back. Yeah. yeah. So thank you for the questions, and thank you, thank Pankuri, you too. for this uh, conversation. And and I had, as I told you. Uh, earlier, uh, this is my first personal meeting with Pakuri. We met uh, an hour ago or a little more. Uh, but I have uh, already experienced something I wasn't believed to happen in Sweden. Uh, Pankuri made the bar open 10 minutes before opening time. <laughs> <laughs> and this is something you don't experience in Sweden every day. <laughs> So cheers and thank you. Thank uh, you. We'll soon be ready for another program at Tronos at the Fringe. Thank you. <laughs>